Hi guys, for my day job I'm a Python developer, but today I'd like to talk to you about Lisp, specifically Clojure. Buckle up, this is going to be fast. I need you to read and listen at the same time. I believe in you. Have I got a deal for you? Clojure has all the good stuff you'd expect from a modern language, but also supports any possible future features you need for your next project. It targets the JVM, JavaScript, CLR, and kind of Python via High. Clojure is concise. This isn't exactly the same as high level T, but it's a good clue. By the way, if someone can tell me in the comments what CoffeeScript is doing so far to the left, please let me know. Clojure is popular. Here's a matrix of how popular programming languages are, from Nimrod at the bottom left to languages with Java in the name at the top. Kotlin's on the way up. Clojure is as popular as Go, Swift, and Haskell. Clojure is a fantastic modern Lisp, a truly powerful weapon. We keep making inferior languages to Lisp, and here's what I mean by that. Lisp had these sorted out in the 1950s. I'll highlight a few. Number six. Statements in other languages are line-oriented, which is a relic of punched cards. Most languages are still hung up on this. That's why lambdas in Python are ugly. Number seven, symbols are useful, ask Ruby Easters. Python has them too, but only theoretically. Eight and nine, these are the two points I want to talk about. The world hasn't caught up to these yet. Let's talk about number eight, a notation for code using trees of symbols. Lisp has this reputation of being old and full of parens, as if this were a feature that should be relegated to the history books like go-tos and uppercase. First of all, it's so easy to read Lisp. If you can read HTML, you can read Lisp. If you can read HTML, you can read Lisp. If you can read HTML, you can read Lisp. HTML's DOM is a tree. Most other languages have this tree of symbols behind the scenes that the compiler sees, but not the user. The source code goes through a parsing step to get to it. Lisp is different. When you write in Lisp, you directly express the abstract syntax tree of your code. You are directly writing the same data structures that the compiler is consuming. This is a very powerful technique and core to Lisp's macro power, which we'll get onto in a moment. Lisp has about the same number of closing parens as JavaScript has these guys. Winking, sad, bearded, hipster? It's not an immediate function. Is it the function block scoping trick? What is this pattern called? Tell me in the comments. Now that you're expressing your code as a tree of symbols, you can really start to do powerful things with macros. You may have come across C macros. These things are just simple text manipulation, a templating system. They're rubbish. Let's look at a theoretical example of a Lisp macro. Python doesn't have a case statement. While Clojure does have one, if it didn't, you could write your own case statement and you could have it today. Let's look at a familiar example. JavaScript developers were literally dancing in the streets when async and await keywords came to JavaScript, and with good reason. Oh, but it hasn't yet come to browsers. It didn't get into ES 2016? To my understanding, and JS devs, please ambush me in a dark alley if I've oversimplified this, await is a lovely bit of syntactic sugar over JavaScript's powerful native callbacks. But if it's not in JS implementations yet, how do we use this feature? The answer is Babel. What is Babel? Babel compiles JavaScript to JavaScript. And this is exactly what Lisp macros do. They compile Lisp to more Lisp. Babel is a very elaborate, complicated macro system. Lisp macros let you write Lisp that runs at compile time and alters itself. Penultimate slide, stick with it guys, we've arrived at the secret source. Let's talk about the rep wrap. To build a rep wrap, you first build your own bad 3D printer with homemade parts and plans from the internet. Then you use that 3D printer to print a better printer. This is like using Lisp. With other programming languages, you adapt the problem to the language. With Lisp, you adapt the language to the problem. This can sound terrifying with traditional languages. Even with metaprogramming happy languages like Python, where you can overwrite the addition operator, it's considered bad form and confusing for the next person. For the Lisp developer, to program is to metaprogram. There's no distinction. To program in Lisp is to program the compiler with each new program. Having the whole language always available also means that you're rarely discouraged from peeking inside the black box. These JavaScript and Python functions are actually written in C, and you'll be writing your own C code if you want to tweak them. With Lisp, it's turtles all the way down.